Hey, this is Adam from Edge. I'm here with Michael and Lilia. How are you guys doing? Good. Doing good. All right. Why don't you tell me what group you work in and what you do? You first, Lilia. Thank you, Michael. Um, I work in group policy. I'm a program manager. Um, I'm also in the group policy team. I'm a program manager, but my the product that I work on is advanced group policy management. Okay. So tell us a little bit about that. We've got some new products coming out. Tell me what's happening with, with GPO. What's new? What's exciting? Okay, well, I'm going to ask Lily some questions. Uh -oh. Actually, no, you're going to ask me some questions. We'll be asking each other questions. Okay. This is a true view of what our life is like, constantly bothering <laughs> each other with questions. Okay, so, well, you say new and exciting. I'll go with the exciting bit. Um, preferences, group policy preferences, is always considered really exciting. It came out in 2008. It's an extension to group policy, so you can work with it right now, manage them from a Vista SB1 machine with RSAT. We can go into that in more detail in another session, or read about it on the blog or a number of articles on TechNet. But preferences came out previously in 2008 with some new stuff for Win7, R2. Michael, what kind of new stuff was there in preferences? Um, so the, the bits we've done in, in preferences is especially stuff like power plans. Um, and we've also introduced support for Internet Explorer 8 as well in there. Um, so now you can actually deploy out preferences for, for IE8 and all the new bits and pieces. And so you'll see a new option in there. Um, but in terms of the power plans, we've got support from XP, Vista, and Windows 7, um, and it's support for, for power management. Tell me a little bit about what kinds of things that power management settings like you said. What, what can you actually do with them? I'll let Lily answer that one. So this kind of goes into what all preferences do. Preferences allows you to set, configure settings that no, normally users would do on their machine. So when we're saying you can configure power settings, it looks just like the power plan that you bring up. So if you create a new preference for Vista, you're seeing the same UI that you would from a Vista box to configure those settings. So unlike a user setting them and saying, you know, I want it to react like this, uh, uh, this amount of time for sleep, this amount of time for screensaver, etc changing on the battery or not and depicting these different things for different kinds of battery performance levels, you get that same experience from the administrator perspective through preferences. So the UI looks just the same and you get this added flexibility of which settings you do and do not want to be captured. Um, and you get the, the uh, power of policy in that you can deploy it using group policy, attach it to a group policy object, um, and then you have even more flexibility with the kind of action you can associate with it. Do I want it to be applied only once? Do I want it to be applied every single time and have it refresh um, so that a user can't undo so it? Lilia, so what else is new in Win7? Or, you know, you're, you're one of the program managers directly working on Windows 7, so PowerShell was your baby. It was, it was, and I, I don't always want to give myself full blame or credit, but I'm, I'm happy to talk about it. So in the PowerShell world, um, on group policy side, we enabled group policy scripting to be PowerShell. So you can add PowerShell scripts to log on, log off, start up, and shut down. And you can see that right in the UI, the same place where you'd be setting up your scripts now, there's an additional tab that says PowerShell scripts. And some ADMX settings to go along with that that configure whether they run first or last or per GPO, how you'd like that to be run. The other thing and the biggest part of our PowerShell work were these 25 commandlets. And you know as well as I do what these 25 commandlets go through. We've all been really excited about it here in the group policy team. Um, they go through everything. They go through GPMC type activities like backing up a GPO, creating a new GPO, creating links to a GPO, inheritance, setting permission, things like that. But I think really the biggest kicker um, is the commandlets that do the registry value work. And Michael, you've, you've thought of some really great scenarios around what you can do with setting registry values. Like, What do you think are some good examples of what to do with that? Well, there's some of the stuff um, that, that I found that it really works well with is um, if you want to deploy settings out things like through you know, HKey, um, local machine, you know, the, the, like the run keys in, 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 Microsoft, in the Microsoft um, part of registry, but also in the current user, um, you see a lot of applications put stuff straight into the run areas and, and often you want to kind of prune that out mm -hmm. and you can actually pop stuff in there that removes stuff out as well. Um, so especially if you're using um, the preferences registry value command, you can actually say, you know what, I don't want that stuff persisting in there every time, I want to whip that out. Um, other examples are if you want to set registry values for applications like um, that, that have application behavior set through the registry, you can use the GP preferences stuff um, through the PowerShell bits to 
either remove, alter, change the behavior of, of those bits and pieces as well. Yeah, some of Michael's favorite examples that he has snuck in has shown me things like removing a toolbar that perhaps is automatically downloaded when you are, are simply trying to install something else or changing an install path to, to a different location. So anything that you can set with the registry, anything, whether it's group policy, like Michael mentioned, other applications, you can configure with the registry value commandlets. Now, the caveat to that is, of course, that because you can set anything in the registry, if you set it wrong, there's nothing to catch you. So there won't be anything that checks and says we're parsing to make sure that that setting is spelled correctly. But when you do get it correctly, right, that's the glory of scripting. That's the, that's the big cheese here in automation. So when you get it done right, it'll be done right every time. And you can iterate to go across, you know, 50 GPOs, 100 GPOs, mm. right? Because that's it's a script rather than having to type it in manually. So... And often there's things you probably want to automate that happens like an overnight thing. For example, you know, like Lilia mentioned, backing up GPOs. You know, in many cases, customers don't have backups of their GPOs. So if they go and make a GPO change one day and then they want to go to roll back to the previous one, well, oops, I can't go rolling back. So you can actually write some pretty clever scripts. And we've actually done some demos of this in some of our sessions where you could automate that if a GPO changes during the day, back that one up that, that night. So don't back up every GPO every night, just back up the ones that change from day to day. And so that way, at least you've got a backup of these things as they change, because when you go and edit stuff in GPMC and you don't have a change management solution like advanced group policy management, you've got nothing to catch you if you make a change and you can't roll back because group policy management editor changes things straight away. Um, it's live straight away. So yeah. those changes are going out straight away and you've got nothing to roll back with. That's a really good point. And part of that, that actually, that script is available on the group policy blog. Um, but what is what it really leverages is the fact that because it's using PowerShell, you're using PowerShell objects. So now everything in group policy has become an object. A GPO is an object. And you can check the modify time in that case becomes an attribute of that object. So you can script according to that and make decisions based on that. You know, inheritance is an object. Permissions become objects. And because these objects all exist in the PowerShell world, any object that exists there that you import, so if you include the Active Directory provider, now you've got Active Directory domain objects that you can use with your link object and your GPO object, and now you've created you know, something that normally you have to do with your mouse and, and very carefully make sure that you're dropping it into the right node. Tons of mistakes can happen through the UI. As much as UI can be really helpful, it can also hurt, right? And it's hard to say, oh, I accidentally dropped it into the wrong OU, and you don't notice until something crashes later, right? When you dive it in a script, you have the right object, you see all your information, you, can, you make it happen once, and then you have it in your script, and it's perfect. So PowerShell's really got a lot going for it, and I encourage you to, to look into it, start playing with it, and I think you'll see some really valuable work into it. Okay. Lilia, I know you just got back from MMS. Can you take some time and show us some of the stuff that uh, your audience has really liked when you were at the conference? Yeah, sure. Okay, let's take a look. So I'm going to go in under ADMX files. I'm going to show you, first I just want to find a setting. Um, filter options, this whole search menu is available before in Server 2008, but I love to show this stuff even now. Um, and I'm just going to go in to enable keyword filter. Now before I show you the setting, just to do a little introduction, a lot of this was UI work in changing the way that the authoring experiences is for these settings. But UI work is important because when you're creating group policy objects, you can put dozens of settings in there and it really matters what your experience is like. So I'm going to search for a firewall setting. Mm 